Hey everyone, welcome to more statistics. I hope chapter 6 went pretty well for you. Uh, today we're starting chapter 7 and we'll get started with an analysis of some chapter 6 test scores. Ooh, scary, right? So how did chapter 6 go? Today we're going to be taking a sample from a population and we're going to start with a very small population and we're going to average um, we're going to sample to try to estimate the average of the population. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's start with a very simple example. Like I said, this is going to start very simple. And the it says my fifth hour is very small. There are only four people in it. Believe it or not, I have had a class with only four people in it before. I don't know why they let me keep it, but I did have one a long time ago. So first of all, uh, this is the entire population. So let's draw a dot plot of the entire population. That's none too difficult, just 60, 70, 80, 90, a dot above each. And then it says to take a sample of any two scores and find the mean of those two scores. So in anticipation of what's coming, I'm just gonna use the first two. So the first sample is going to be 60 and 70. And that mean, x bar, equals 65. Great. Don't have to do a whole lot of math here. And the next one is to figure out all the possible samples of size 2. All right, well, we just need to pair 60 with everything. So 60 and 70, 60 and 80, 60 and 90. Then we pair 70 with all the other ones. Um, I've already done 70 and 60. So 70 and 80, and then 70 and 90. And then I'm going to pair 80 with everything. So 80 and 90, because I've already done 80 with 60, and I've already done 80 with 70. So I just need to do 80 with 90. And that's, that's it. That's all of the possible samples. Let's find the sample mean for each one of these. So the average of 60 and 80 is 70, 60 and 90, the average is 75, 70 and 80, the average is 75, and you can kind of read the rest, I guess. And then now we're going to make a dot plot of each of the means that we found in number three. So now we're going to take all of these X bars and we're going to make a dot plot for all the X bars. And taking a look at that, um, this distribution, uh, this is the distribution of X bars. Okay, And each one of these dots represents the average of one sample. What is the mean of the population? Okay, so what is the mean of the population? Let's see, the mean of the population, that's called mu, and that's gonna be equal to 60 plus 70 plus 80 plus 90, the whole thing divided by four. And wouldn't you know it that that is 75. So we'll just mark that right here. Mu equals 75. So is that kind of startling? If we took a sample, the sampling, the distribution of the samples has the same mean as the mean of the population. So let's label things over here. Um, this is one, I guess, individual, right? With a test score of 90. Okay, This right here is what we would call a sample mean. And these are all the sample means
for n sample size equal to 2. Uh, there are no other samples of size 2 that we could have had. And so this right here, this distribution of all um, all of the, uh, distribu the distribution or the dot plot of all of the sample means, we call this the sampling distribution. So keep an eye on this term because it is big in this next phase in statistics. Sampling distribution is big, big, big business for us. So what is that sampling distribution? So uh, first thing we need to do is get our head straight with parameters and statistics. So a statistic is a number that describes a sample, and the one that we did was x bar. The parameter is a number that describes a population. In our population, our, we call that mu. So you'll notice here that uh, for parameters, these are both Greek letters, mu and sigma. And for the statistic, they don't use Greek letters. So that is one easy way to figure out whether you're talking about a statistic or a parameter. Um, just take a look as if you're looking at Greek. Now the next part is a sampling distribution versus a population distribution. So the sampling distribution shows a statistic found in all possible samples of size n, which is what we did here. This is all the sam possible samples with sampling size n equals 2. So that was the sampling distribution. The population distribution shows all individuals. So this right here, this was a population distribution, and it actually says population distribution already. It just shows all the individuals. Um, so when you're looking at a sampling distribution, and for argument's sake, we're saying this is a sampling distribution with n equals 5, one of these dots represents the statistic from one sample. So this is a sample of 5. This one over here is a sample of 5. That's a sample of five. That's a sample of five. Each one of those dots represents a sample of five. So that's kind of a definitional part of this. And uh, let's see what we can do here and check your understanding phase. To determine how much homework time students will get in each class, Mr. Lin has a student select an SRS of 20 chips from a large bag. The number of red chips in the SRS determines the number of minutes um, in class students get to work on homework. Mr. Lin claims that there are 200 chips in the bag and 100 of them are red. Okay, so uh, we're looking at only how many red chips <coughs> that we get from the bag. Mr. Mrs. Lin, sorry, it's a Mrs. Lin, claims that there are 200 chips in the bag and 100 of them are red. Okay, so 100 red, 100 other. When Jenna selected a random sample of 20 chips from her bag without looking, she got seven red chips. Does this provide evidence that less than half of the chips in the bag are red? Oh, so this is an interesting question. She got less than half red chips, and Mrs. Lin says that half of the chips in the bag are red, but Jenna only pulled seven red chips out of 20. So she's saying, I didn't get 10 red chips. This is fraud. There aren't 100 red chips in the bag. So let's identify the population. Here are all the chips in the bag. In the bag, and there are 200 of them. So the parameter here is the proportion of red chips. Not really the number of red chips, but the proportion 
of red chips. And we learned that that's Greek. Um, so the proportion, oh, not, not Greek, but the, the parameter here for that is, wow, this is a mistake. This should have been P. The parameter for red chips is P. And we're saying that that's, Mrs. Lynn is saying that that's 50%. Now the sample here is the 20, gen, is Jenna's 20 chips. Okay. The statistic here is a proportion of red chips for Jenna. And her P hat equals that's 20 out of 7, so that is a 35%, percent point three five. What is the evidence that less than half the chips in the bag are red? Well, that's pretty easy. Jenna didn't get 50% red chips. She got less. Okay. So, was it possible for her to get less than 50% red chips? Uh, most of us would say, yeah, it's possible because, you know, whenever you take a sample, you're not guaranteed of getting 10 and 10. You, you're going to get some kind of variability in there. Next, find two possible explanations. So explanation one, sampling variability. She got less, or she only got seven red chips by chance. The bag wasn't fixed. It was just her luck to only get seven red chips. The other explanation is there are less than 100 red chips. So less than 50% red chips. And if that's true, then of course Jenna is going to get less than 50%. Okay, it, it kind of makes sense. So one of these is true. Maybe both of these are true, but one of these is definitely true. Okay. So we use technology to simulate the, choosing 500 SRSs of size 20 from a population of 200 chips. And the dot plot shows p hat equals this sample proportion of red chips in 500 samples. There is one dot at point 80, that's this one right here. Explain what this value represents. And this says that one of the samples, because there's only one dot, how many samples did she do? Um, 500 SRSs. So one of the 500 samples was 80% red chips. Just one. So that's, I think that's 16 red chips. Okay. Each dot is one sample. So one sample of with 80% red chips. Would it be surprising to get a sample proportion P equals 35% or smaller when P is 0.5? Well, if P is 0.5, 35% or smaller would represent, would be all of these chips right here. Does that look like 5% of the, of the samples? And I don't think that looks like 5% of the samples. Uh, that looks like a lot more than 5%. So it seems like more than 5% of the samples had a P hat of 0.35 or smaller. So that means Jenna's sample is not rare. So it's not rare, therefore it's not surprising. So based on the previous answers, is there convincing evidence that less than half of the chips in the red bag are large red bag are red? And I'd say no, because we got, you know, 
we were not able to detect it. Um, it's not convincing evidence. Jenna's sample uh, is wasn't something that is unlikely. And it's not unlikely if P was actually equal to 0 0.5. So maybe there are less than 50% red chips. We were just not able to detect it. There is not convincing evidence that that's true. So that's it for us, everyone. Um, pretty simple one today. Uh, make sure you get your idea straight. And remember that one typo, the parameter for, it, for proportion is P. And the, per, the statistic is P hat. So we'll see you next time here. Have a good one.